Hey there, Neely Salem here with another spiritual thought about Shabbat. You know, we're talking about how we read the Torah on Shabbat and how the fact that Shabbat even comes from the Torah, but wait, what even is the Torah? So I'm gonna read through a beautiful list that I compiled to help explain what the Torah is in the first place. This video might take longer than a minute. So first of all, God calls himself Anuchi, which is an acronym for the Aramaic Ana. Nafshit Kitavit Yahavit. I learned this from my rabbi, Rabbi Shalom Ratzichon Alivracha. And he says that this means, I have placed my soul within these words. In other words, the Torah is the essence of God, the soul of God that we get to taste from. But what else is it? Our tradition says that the Torah is the blueprint for the entire universe, that God looked in the Torah and created everything. Rabbi David Sachs says that the Torah is the infinite compressed into the finite. That's a trip. I'll say that one again. The infinite compressed into the finite. The Torah, as we know, it rhymes with the word aura. It's not just a rhyme. It's a derivative. And aura means light. The Torah is light. It's divine light that we got to receive on Mount Sinai. The Torah is also called black fire on white fire because the letters are likened to the black fire and the negative space behind it to the white fire. Take that to mean whatever you want. Fire! It could burn you, it can warm you, it can illuminate, it can cook. <laughs> you got it. Now, interestingly enough, Torah is also likened to water and the sages say that anywhere you read the word water in the Bible, it's also referring to Torah itself. And again, the lessons of water are endless. It's moldable, it conceals, it reveals, it is humble, it always goes down, it takes the shape of that which holds it. The, it's like the, the metaphors are endless with the most important one being that water is life and water when put on things, helps it grow. So too, like the Torah. Torah is also likened to a tree. It is called the tree of life to those who hold fast to it. It's Chaim Hi Lemachazikimba. And you can go crazy with the metaphors on a tree as well. The Torah is the symbol of peace and our book that teaches us that our goal in this world is to bring peace amongst ourselves and amongst the nations. It's a most incredible history book of thousands of years old. I mean, how cool is it that you can literally read the conversations of your ancestors? That's so trippy and I love it. Torah is also known as truth and perfection. And sometimes it's difficult because you read the stories and they're disturbing, but believe it or not, that's the truth. The Torah is known as the word of God. The Torah is known as the books of Moses. The Torah is known as the number one bestseller, maybe until Harry Potter, but it was for a long time. It's your family's personal tradition. Also halacha, which is the legal bindings that's a derivative of the Torah, is also known as the way, the path. Maybe you've heard of this in Buddhism or other religions. Ours is also called the way and the path. Uh, in Torah, it describes itself as paths of pleasantness that you know you're following the Torah if you're walking in the ways of peace and pleasantness. And if you're not walking in the ways of peace and pleasantness, you're not walking in the ways of the Torah. <sighs> Another awesome one is they say that the entire Torah from the first letter to the last is one long name of God. And also, it's what the Kabbalists say that we learned in the womb even before we emerged. So these are some aspects of what is Torah. But now that you know that, maybe you can understand why it's such a central part of our Shabbat. But we'll get technical and explain the technical reasons why we read the Torah on Shabbat as well. Thanks for listening.